Young nigga guy, young nigga guy, young nigga guy, young nigga guy, young nigga guy. Won't like my, won't like my, won't like my, won't like my. Keys. Man, I'm from the hood. <laughs> Right, I'm from the hood, bro, and so I grew up in poverty. Um, my mama was in and out the street. My mama was in and off, in and off, you know, drugs and in and out of, you know, prostitution, like all that stuff, man. My dad was on heroin, R.I.P. Um, he was in and out of jail and penitentiaries and institutions, and so all I knew, fam, was was that life, and so consequently. That life really took me into gangs and drugs and criminal activity. And then out of jail by the age of 11, 12, by the, age of, by the time I was 16, I was facing 100 years in the penitentiary, right? And just cut me a break, went to the joint, NCYF, did some time there. And uh, really, instead of getting better, I just tried to get smarter. Mm. And it's a big difference. And I and I wish I would have ended. I wish I could have said, "Man, I'm here to get better." But obviously, I was trying to get smarter. So we're trying to get smarter. I could get out quicker and uh, get back to business, man. And so that was kind of my mo. And so I spent a total of 14 months the first time, my first bid, and uh, touched down. Stood before the parole board. Told them I'm rehabilitated. Y'all done changed my life. <laughs> With a, smile right. on your face. with a smile on my face, well, we, we're going to grant you, we're going to, we're going to grant you parole since we rehabilitated you, Mr. Meyer Pierce, and, and they let me out, bro, and so when they let me out, man, I went back doing the same stuff, gang bang, selling dope, smoking weed, all that, and uh, I was out for five months, and it's crazy because um, the night I got arrested was... There were three consecutive days where I was involved in criminal activity. And each day I got away with it. And on the third day I got caught. Mm. Right? And and so when they caught me that day, it, it, it saved my life. Because, I, bro, I was headed for destruction. And people all around me was dying. You know, you had these peaks and flow, ebbs and flows of violence. It's much like we're having now. Yeah. We were in one of those seasons during the time I had got arrested. And it was really the grace, man. It was really mercy that, that found me that night. And so when I got arrested, you know, they take you down to Bear Rock, right? Uh, uh, man, Bear Rock is harder than jail and prison, right? Bear Rock, you up under the jail, right? And so they take you there for a minute. And so I'm there, man. They put me in that little cell. And I, 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 met, I called my girlfriend, man, and then called my grandmama. And then I fell on my, on my knees and I just said, man, God, like, I don't know if you real, um, but like, I'm, I'm, I'm destroying my life. But if you change me, I'll serve you for the rest of my life. And so that began, um, to my knowledge, the real like journey for me of discovery, discovering who I was. So that kind of how it started, like that, that spiritual awakening. And then that evolved into dreams and visions you know even though i'm facing at this time now 200 years in the penitentiary right mm. but i'm still dreaming and so uh that that began it for me and then obviously i stayed in the county for almost a year a little under a year but during that time man i started getting vision for my future even though i was facing a lot of time and so um when I, I was trying to get smarter at doing what was detrimental mm. this time i'm gonna cut this way i'm gonna mm. move this way i'm gonna act this way i'm gonna work with this person i'm gonna, I'm gonna cut these cats off you know what i mean uh, i'm gonna you know i'm gonna do all I'm, I'm gonna try to uh i'm gonna try to beat the system at their own game mm -hmm. yeah i'm gonna sign up for everything y'all got for me but my motivation wasn't better it was i'm gonna get smarter at what i'm doing versus that second time around it was about me getting better. And as I got better, I started to learn. I started to learn about myself. I started to learn that I had some hurts and some hangups, man, that I really needed to address. That I had to deal with the trauma and the the flaws and the mindset that that oh this is, you know, 
woo 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 on mine. This I'm from this section or this on my hood and and this you know what I mean. This is what it and so that's that that were the, that was the early days of my of my journey, man. Trying to figure out who I was. Yeah. So fast forward eight years. I do eight years, right? The judge sentenced me to fourteen to thirty years in prison without parole. Plus the two to three years I wasn't done with from my previous bid, mm. right? So I had 16 to 33 years sentence in 2002, right? So the crazy thing is, is I wasn't supposed to get out until 2019. Do the math. It's just a couple of years ago, yeah. right? And so now with that time, some, a couple of things happened. Number one. I started getting these impressions that God was going to do something crazy in my life and a miracle was going to happen. He was going to let me out so that I can go back to the hood and get busy. Right. And it happened. Seven months after I got sentenced, the law changed. It will be 365. People who weren't on parole couldn't get parole because they had committed previous felonies. So you had you had to jam your whole time. But they come out with a legislative bill that changed the whole game. So it enabled me to get out in 2008. And so once I get out, I already get out with a plan. Cause for eight years I was like, I was, I was, I was building, I was building the plan and the platform for like what I felt like I was called to, you know what I mean? My section of the city. And so when I get out, I knew exactly what I had to do. Like I had to go finish college, right? Cause I had started college on the inside. Mm -hmm. So I went and got a double major and, and got busy, but even in getting busy, some of the expectations that I had was, well, man, my family gonna understand how, how I'm getting down. They gonna be on it. My friends, the homies, like everybody gonna be for me, you know. And and for the most part, everybody have been for me in terms of, oh man, I see, I see how you, how you moving. But at the end of the day, like not everybody want to see you successful. Case. Young nigga got keys, he said please, ayy